Bethany Williams, host of Three Days to a Raise. What would it take you to raise the stakes? Go for it. To raise the bar. Run after it. And to elevate your life, your earnings, and your job to the next level. You are not going to want to miss this. This is going to be amazing. Welcome to this week's edition of Three Days to a Raise. I am here with Jenny Mulks Weineke. CEO and founder of Along Comes Hope. And Jenny, thank you for coming to the studio. Thank you, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. I'm so excited to tell her story or have her tell her story. You are going to be amazed at what she's been through and the life that she's built. So Jenny, take us back a few years. Take us back to the beginning of the story. You were working for a corporation. Correct. You were working in pharma, so tell us the story. I was. I was working in pharma for 14 years, actually, before wow. I decided to leave that corporate world and start a nonprofit to help kids with cancer. Wow. Wow. And what, what drove you from, from, I want to start a nonprofit? What gets you to that decision point? A lot of change and a lot of awareness that there's a big need out there in the world to help and be of service to children yeah, that are fighting absolutely. cancer. But really, it was my own personal journey with cancer. Um, in 2006, I was diagnosed with a very rare cancer, mm -hmm. and I was given less than uh, less than a year, six months to a year, to survive. And I was a single mom at the time with a four-year-old little boy. Oh, I can't imagine. Yeah, and it. It wasn't anything that um, you can prepare for. No. You're literally thrown into battle, and you're thrown into war, and you have no tools. And how old were your children? Gabriel was only four years old, and I'm a single mom. Oh, so it was, it was time to roll and figure it out. But I had some things on my side. I had the fact that I was in pharmaceuticals. Um, allowed me to understand how healthcare system works. Right. It also right. allowed me to understand how to um, manage my benefits. I had mm -hmm. good benefits. I had a good income, and I knew how to be my own advocate. I had been helping um, a doctor's offices teach their patients how to be their own advocates. So here I was now going to be taking my own advice. Because it really does take. I do that for a lot of people as well. Because I've been in healthcare for so many years. I end up helping people advocate for themselves Correct. because it's complicated. There's insurance, there's co-pays, there is this perception that if one doctor tells you that, that's the golden truth. That's right. And the whole concept of second opinions, of making sure you have the right information, doing your own research, that is so foreign to so many people. Well, and you know what they, they what happens right away when you hear that diagnosis is, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die tomorrow. Right. I don't have time. I don't have time. Oh, I can see and that. And I don't even know where to that. start. Mm -hmm. So it's the um, it's that ability to kind of hunker down, focus, get laser focused, and also intuitively know the truth of who is really um, speaking your language. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna mesh with your your treatment team, and you need to really dial into your intuition on that. Um, and, and not stop until you find that team that will give you the same goal that you're looking for, whether it's palliative care or it's survival. And you know what I find is so many times your caregivers aren't telling you the whole story. Oh, amen. That's and and they don't, they're trying to be kind, I think, but they don't want to give you false hopes, they don't want to send you down a rat hole. And unfortunately, you need all the information and you need to make your own decisions. And sometimes you don't have all the information. Correct. One of the things I'm trying to teach healthcare providers is a misinformed patient is a dangerous patient mm. because they become Dr. Google and they fill in the holes themselves. themselves. And right. then they come in and they take more time of your office staff and the care provider. Mm -hmm. So to give them the information, to make an educated decision and be your own advocate, you have to be able to do your own due diligence to know that this is where I'm supposed to head. Because sometimes the treatment for some people might not be worth it. For the others, or Correct. for any, for, it might not be right for everyone. Exactly. Right, 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 I've noticed that. You know, so then you started Along Comes Hope. I did. So tell us what that is, what you do. This is very exciting. Thank you. Well, I think if, if everybody could take something negative in their life and turn it into something positive. Can you imagine the world we'd have? Yes, can Woo! you? Wouldn't it be great? <laughs> and one by one, we can try to do that. Well, if you look at the most significant things that have come out of the world, they have come, unfortunately, from tragedy. Right. If you look at America's Most Wanted, that came from complete travesty. His son was murdered. 
correct? Is and right? if you look at the cancer, uh, the Susan G. Komen, her sister died of cancer. And so mm -hmm. unfortunately, if you can take something in your life and create a rainbow, to create something incredible out of it, right? then you can change the world. That's true. One person, One at, person a at a time. Mm -hmm. One starfish at a time. Yeah, absolutely. So my thought is, and my theory now, is taking cancer and turning it into can serve. And the, the audience and the crowd I've decided to serve are the children, because to me they're the most vulnerable victims of cancer. Wow. No child should have their, their childhood stolen away um, and not be able to be their own voice and their own advocate. So it takes one person at a time to decide to stand up and help be their advocates. And in the way that we advocate for the kids, we, um, we actually embrace the entire family, not just the child that's fighting. So Long Comes Hope really focuses on three main things. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is to help with the cost of travel and assistance to get to the, the, the location. Places they need to be. Exactly. Right, right. You can't just go down the street mm -hmm. to the next door you know, the, the general hospital here and get your cancer treated. It's not cookie cutter treatment. Some cancers, their protocol is very basic, but especially with children, there are very specialized mm -hmm. hospitals you need to go to. Mm -hmm. And our, what I always say is that no family should have to choose affordability over survivability. Right. That's absolutely unacceptable. Uh, so that's the main focus that we do. And the second thing is emotional support. Mm -hmm. I mean, how long do you think these, pa these patients fight? Can be years, yes, right? Yes. It, it, you know, and some, it can be exhausting. It, it, it's a marathon for everyone, for the whole yep. support system, the family, the caregivers, the child. Um, when my daughter was younger, she started something called the Sunshine Kids, oh. and she wanted to do a nonprofit when she was a teenager. She's an amazing girl. Wow. She's grown up now, but she started creating cancer care kits to give away to people in the waiting room because you sit in the oh, waiting yeah. room for hours and hours and day hours. after day and we did one for a 10 year old that had uh, brain cancer and she collects things specifically for that patient wow. and puts them in there and then gives it to them and that one little thing has thank yous it has quarters for the vending machines yes. cards and all the things something the, to some um, hard candy yeah, because you get that taste. Um, yep, yep. Keto Unscented and... lotion because yes. your skin gets... I mean, the whole thing, she had it all researched out. Wow. And I think that the kid one was the one that was really hard for her as a, as a teenager she herself. She could relate. She could relate to this, I'm losing my childhood. This is where I'm spending my time in this right. hospital. And uh, so I think that is amazing. Yes. So, but there's there's more to the emotional support too. It can even venture out to art therapy for a sibling or the mom and dad, because as you said, it's a rippling effect, mm -hmm. and we don't really know how it's going to affect each individual family. So we customize it to whatever their needs are. If um, maybe that sibling is left in the dust right now because right. we're treating the most emergent right. child, so do they need to go to soccer camp? Will that help them get bonded with their peers? Wow. Mom and dad, maybe they need counseling. But one of the things that we're really known for, which I know you've seen on our website, is our Hope the Bear. And I should have Hope the Bear here. I with know me. you did. <laughs> Bring a Hope the Bear? It's in the car. It really is. <laughs> Imagine this picture that our amazing producer is going to pop up right now. There you go. So Hope the Bear goes to kids all over the nation. And what might seem like a little bear to you and I, holds a lot of secrets and it holds a lot of comfort and mm -hmm. companionship. You can record a, a message in the paw and you can oh. re-record it and you press the little purple heart and the purple heart actually that's around the collar is to represent our soldiers for the purple heart. So we all go through our challenges mm -hmm. and we overcome it as a hero and a warrior. That's so amazing. Um, so do people so people donate to Alonkin's home? They do. That's how we're able to do our programs is through the generosity of corporate sponsors, donors, grants. Mm -hmm. um, and we're our growth is limited to our budgets. Right, right. So, so the more we take grow. Me, take me through this journey. You were working in corporate, you're working for pharma, you have this difficult, difficult thing you live through as a single mom, and you come out of it. And create this amazing nonprofit. So tell me what it's like to live. What does it feel like to live in your purpose? It feels like I'm a completely different person, to be honest with you. Um, I loved my job. I really did. I loved working in the corporate world. Um, we were a pharmaceutical family. We lived together building that company. But I knew when I was left here to survive, 
I it really felt purposeful that God kept putting it on my heart and the kids just kept coming to me that I was supposed to take this leap of faith and I was supposed to jump off that corporate cliff. Oh, it was terrifying. It was terrifying. <laughs> and I would, I'd wake up many nights at 3 o'clock in the morning going, all right, God, I've got one wing on right now. <laughs> I talk to so many people that are at that place. They want to do something, but the risk, and that's really what, when I started Three Days to a Race, that was the whole concept behind it, is raise the stakes. Like, take the risks exactly. and take the plunge. Well, you know, it, especially if you, I know it sounds kind of interesting when you try to take the money aspect out of it because we, so many of us work for money. Right. But there is something that money can't buy, and that is a, a, a point of self-respect and a point of seeing humanity change in front of your eyes. Um, that's a priceless gift. The gift of being able to step into someone's life when they're in absolute crisis um, I can't fathom what these families go through, even though I witnessed it. I still can't fathom their pain. It's as a parent, you know, we we would do anything to protect our children, but to be able to to help their journey, we can't take their cancer diagnosis away, but we can certainly make their journey one with love and provide absolutely. Hope. And so that to me, you is probably a had friends that walked alongside you oh. for your journey, and it's the same And strangers. Thing. And they strangers. came out of the dark. Yep. Wow. Uh, from literally all over the world. Literally. Wow. I had nuns praying for me in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Have you visited them? Because you probably should. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will. I can't imagine what kind of impact you've had on these children and their families as you walk alongside them, knowing not only what you know in pharma, knowing healthcare, knowing advocacy, but just feeling like they're not alone. As right, they go and what they've also given back to me without even, without trying. These little warriors, they, they've got such a level of wisdom because they've had to grow up so fast and they are facing their own death many a times and the hospital has to let them know where they are with their treatment. So if they're having a leg that's being removed, that 11-year-old child is signing a waiver. Mom and dad can't force them to go in there. That child is very cognizant that they have to have that leg or that arm removed to try to defeat that cancer. So these kids have a level of wisdom and um, almost compassion for everybody else mm -hmm. that you can't you can't teach it. It's mm -hmm. innate from their experience, and it's um, it's the gifts that they give to me is a, a priceless one too. So we have all kinds of viewers that are watching that are probably um, sneaking away from their corporate jobs to watch this it's right okay. now. I'll it's, write you a note. Yeah, I'm sure it's their lunch hour yeah. or something like that. <laughs> what advice would you have for the thousands of people that are watching that are, you know, on their lunch hour, sneaking in, turning on their internet, yeah. and watching this show and watching you smile? And you can obviously see you are beaming. Oh, I mean, you've all you're you're it's beautiful. <laughs> first met you um, I felt the same thing I just thought what an amazingly impactful Aww, woman thank you and so what advice would you have honestly I know when you hear my story like she left a really good job good money <laughs> single <laughs> provider wait what what's wrong with this girl you don't have to be all in to be in oh, you can do the job and do the work so if there's something that ignites your heart and ignites your passion go for it and it might piece together that you can leave more safely than I did by just saying, I'm going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm off that cliff. <laughs> but you don't have to do it that way. So some people say, I could never do that. I could never be a part of that because I couldn't make that big of a, a jump. I have too many obligations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you can make jumps in smaller steps. You don't have to leave. Yeah, I think that's true. And I, I don't know why, but we do get mentally stuck there. I talk to a lot of people that are that feel like I can't have a foot here and a foot there. I have to be all in wherever right. I'm at. It's, and I, I don't know why people stick there. You know something I thought of too the other day is um, I was thinking about how much self-care I had to get as a regional manager because I traveled a lot. I was gone every week. So, you know, I would see the chiropractor and I would see you know, masseuse and I would do this and that to, to build my strength back up. And I was thinking about it the other day the level of self-care I have to do now to feel well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
is completely different. And I think it's because I feel like I'm being fed more spiritually and um, the stresses are different. Right. And it's right. not somebody telling me that nothing's ever enough. It's me putting my own pressures on myself to say, well, cancer doesn't take a rest today either. So perhaps you need to not take a rest right now. Because <laughs> I do work every day. I mean, there's very few days that I don't work. Even if I'm on vacation, there's there's plenty of things. To All do. right, you're going to make me feel guilty. Now, <laughs> you need I to take a going vacation. On vacation. <laughs> I am not going to work. <laughs> I'm not advocating that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding about the vacation yeah. <laughs> or they're not working. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing, too, is I'm only as good, or along comes hope is only as good as I am. And so if I'm not right. taking care of myself, if I'm not taking those breaks that I do need here and there, then that's not doing anybody any favors. I think that is where we miss it in corporate. We miss, in corporate America and around the world and other corporations, we are not good at self-care. We're not good at looking at ourselves and taking care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. I talk to people that aren't sleeping very well, they're not eating very well. Right. And since the recession, there's been kind of this compulsive, obsessive compulsive, I've got to work, I've got to work, I've got to work. Because if you don't, the next guy in line will work right. twice as hard right. as you. And I actually had an old boss that would say that. Uh, so <laughs> That's inspiring. <laughs> yeah, living in this fear instead of, so we're not living our purpose, we're not taking care of ourselves, and we're just living in this fear world. Right. That says it has to be a certain way. Go, go. And mm -hmm. where's the happiness quotient? And and it's lo it's it's right. losing its way out of the picture. And your passion mm -hmm. will dissipate too. And your connection with your peers and your community, mm -hmm. all those things start to kind of fall to the wayside because you become robotic. Mm -hmm. And you you lose touch with your passion. I think. I do feel happens. like I'm working. Sometimes um, sometimes it feels like people in the workforce are all zombies. We literally have created our own zombie right. world. <laughs> so the zombie apocalypse is real. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Absolutely. I am so glad you came Thank to you. visit. Do you have any parting thoughts for our audience as you go out? Other than donate to uh, Alon Comes so. <laughs> Yes, we are, we are always in need of um, additional sponsors and supporters and donors. But a way to step in and easily be an advocate is the, the third component of what Along Comes Hope does is we do advocacy work from grassroots all the way up to Washington, D.C. That doesn't mean you have to join me in Washington, D.C., although I'd love you to and meet with your senators and congressmen. But we do awareness campaigns and edu educational things that as we plant the seeds and they understand better what these children's needs are, mm -hmm. awareness it starts with awareness, it turns into action, and it equals more cures. And so one by one, people can come on board and choose to be a voice. Um, it will make all the difference in the world. Our kids are our future. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Jenny, Thank you. for coming aboard it's and honor, telling huh? your story. <laughs> and uh, we will put all of her contact information here so that you can be a part of her journey of a long comes hope. Thank you for watching, and have a fantastic Thank <laughs> you.